Hello friends, I'm Brenda Crouch. I believe the winds of global change compel us to the mysteries that speak to path and purpose. In a time of amplified chaos, there is a divine compass to navigate the conditions that drive our everyday decisions. For the next 30 minutes, we'll explore stories and the knowledge of sojourners who will point the way to the secrets that lie before us. Join the conversation and welcome to Inside Voice. Hello, friends. I've got an exciting show for you today. And what I want to talk about is healing of wounds. Have you experienced trauma in your life? Have you experienced physical uh, things that have really hindered your life? Are you sick? Are you dealing with a lot of emotional things and physical things? Well, oftentimes those traumas are manifested in our body. Sometimes the emotional wounds that we carry will manifest in disease. And we need to know how do we find the resources? Uh, how do we know God's will and what he will do to help us to heal? I think we need to know how to unpack some of the things that we carry around, and we just don't know how to go there and revisit them. Well, my guest today is my dear friend, Joan Hunter, and her genuine approach to uh, the gospel and to healing is candid. And she has a wonderful way with people. She's able to meet them on an intimate level, and she's relatable. Oftentimes, people have compared her to being a, a Carol Burnett with uh, the giftings uh, of the Holy Spirit and in the likeness of Jesus. Her heart is to heal and to help those who are hurting. She's the daughter of Charles and Francis Hunter, who were known as the Happy Hunters. And uh, so that makes her the daughter of evangelists for over 40 years. So she's a product of ministry. She's authored 26 books, and she's got another one that's just gone to print. Joan ministers hope and healing around the world on uh, major platforms, and she's been seen on many high-profile television programs. I happened to meet her on the television set for an interview a few years ago, and we instantly connected and realized we had a lot of commonalities. So I'm, without further ado, I want to just welcome you, my dear friend, Joan, and thank you so much for being with me today. It's such an honor. Well, it's so good to see you again. It's it's better if we're in person with each other rather than on the <laughs> yeah. set, but this is that's, this will work. So yeah, that's so true. But you know what? Thank God for technology because look what we're that's able so to true. do. I mean, you're on the road, and I'm uh, in kind of in in between homes right now. I'm at one of my homes, and uh, it's just amazing what we can do to connect. And I think what a uh, what a gift God's given us with this ability. Uh, but, you know, I want to jump right in because I don't want to waste time. Um, I want you to go back and share, as you did with me, uh, from really from even the painful part of your experience as your world, as your ministry, your whole life just began to unravel before your eyes. And you had to deal with disillusionment, shock, trauma, and uh, you then had to make those micro decisions toward the steps that would bring you to healing. Can you tell us what that looked like, what it felt like, and share that experience with us? Well, many times people will look at me today and they'll go, oh, look at her. She's, you know, she was born with a silver spoon in her mouth. Well, yeah. I often say I, I, it was a wooden spoon with lots of splinters, to say the <laughs> least. And, uh, you know, it started oh. off very rocky. And uh, mm. I, I have a book that just came out called Annihilate Fear. And it talks about how fear can come in. And when my mother and my natural father, not Charles Hunter, but my natural father got married, wonderful. And then all of a sudden he was horrific and became a narcissist and beater. And, and so here we have the trauma of I'm already in the womb. She yeah. leaves, you know, and for her life, she runs for her life. Well, from that moment, even though it was, I mean, I was probably a day or two in the womb, and that's it. That trauma in my mom's body yeah. came into my body, manifested when I was 20 years old. Wow. And, you know, it's absolutely amazing with what God did where that was concerned, you know, how I got healed of that. But the thing is, is that, you know, later on, you know, I was the, the most quietest person, no self-esteem, Mm -hmm. um, just beyond what you could imagine. The last thing I ever wanted to do was be on a microphone. And now I travel with my own microphone. Wow. Uh, I have my, you know, be on camera. And now I have my own television show, 
you know, and if we give our our things to the Lord that are not of God, and yeah. like told, I was dumb, stupid, ignorant, retarded, never be able to read or write, having 26 books in print, I'm the biggest shock than my brother, but that's another story. But the world tried to put me in this box of can't. But God yeah. says if you remove that box, then you'll discover what you can do through Christ. And mm. But then I had to realize, I mean, I was still very, very shy until about 21 years ago, look, you know, look for a curtain to hide behind, uh, because you've got such a powerful mom. Everybody loved mom, you know, and then they're, yeah. oh, that's Joan, you know, kind of a thing. And mm-hmm. so it, it was, that hurt, you know, didn't do my self-esteem any good. I'm not right. my mother. I will never be my mother. I have similarities because she's my mother. Okay. Sure. And, uh, but then 20, roughly 21 years ago, uh, faced with the reality of my ex, my now ex-husband, we were in ministry together. We were co-pastoring a church all the while he's living a double life as homosexual. Mm-hmm. And, and I am like, I'm worried that is he really doing that? He wouldn't do it to me. Wouldn't do it to the church. Wouldn't do it to our girls, but he did. And, yeah. and the betrayal and the worry and the trauma and all that kind of stuff manifested mm-hmm. that two days after divorce, I had my annual mammogram and my whole left side was just covered with cancer. Mm-hmm. And so given a death sentence of two years, um, you know, and I'm like, and I'm like, I'm laying on the table and I'm planning my funeral because wow. my girls had been through enough. They didn't need to worry about my funeral. And then as I'm laying there looking at the cancer on the sonogram, and I started slapping myself, and literally, physically, and I said, no, I'm going to live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Today I choose life. So even this day, I am declaring what God did for me. And I went on a journey of getting my heart healed, getting free of unforgiveness, trauma, betrayal, uh, worry, uh, unforgiveness, wow. and I know I said that, and worry, and I know I already said that, but worry is the main thing. Family unit worrying is the main thing that opens up the door for breast cancer. I've never, wow. in, in thousands upon thousands of people I've prayed for that have had breast cancer, you can, it always goes right back to a family trauma, whether mm. the husband, whether the children, <laughs> uh, even finances in the family, just worrying about the family. And so, I said, you know, cancer I can go to the doctor for, but I need this healed. And I said, God, I can live without a breath, but I can't live with a broken heart. And so I went after getting my heart healed, you know, Mm. of broken heart syndrome, of betrayal, and all those things that I list. I mean, there's like 30 things on the list. And in Mm. the process of getting all of that healed, I thought, I need to go back and see what they recommend procedure-wise, you Mm. know. And uh, so I go back and they spend two hours everywhere, upside, run right, left, everywhere, um, and they couldn't find anything. And and so um, it's supernatural. But I believe that when you get rid of the root cause, I even have a book on root causes, Mm -hmm. like what opens the door for sickness. And, Mm -hmm. um, And so when I got rid of all of those roots, then... I, I no longer fed the disease. Whatever the disease is, I starved it. And I teach people yeah. how to starve their sickness to death. Yes, get prayer, but stop feeding it. You know, mm-hmm. they've given me two years to live. I know I'm going to die. I know I'm going to die. <clears throat> you know, that type of thing. And so it's so important that we get rid of all of that junk, mm-hmm. um, any of the fear. And, and I, I will often say I go around with Holy Ghost soap. You know, clean out people's mouths. You know, I'll mm. never pay my house off. I'll never get out of debt. Mm. I'll never, you know, I'll never get well. I'll always be sick the rest of my life. I know I'm going to die young. Shut your mouth. You mm. know, start confessing the word that I'm going to do, you know, all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I'm going to yeah. live a long, healthy life honoring my mom and dad, you know, yeah. things like that. And, um, you know, and it'll <laughs> turn your life around. Totally yeah. Life and what you're talking about is really a shift in, in our focus because, you know, it's right. just like Peter, when Peter stepped out onto the water, you know, I imagine as, as I've thought about this, 
I don't think he was thinking, well, analyzing, well, I guess, you know, Jesus is doing it. So I'm going to step on the water. Instead, it's like the child who's running after their father, the child who's running after that, that person that they love and adore that they know that protects them. And he was just so excited to see him. He was overcome with in this moment that could have been, uh, you know, uh, it, that was full of fear. I mean, we have fears. We have things that come at us. But in those moments, if we can shift our focus and look to Christ, he is the hope on our horizon. And right. we are able to do things that are supernatural that we could never do on our own. And I love that, you know, like you were saying, he, he will, in this way, he will take and use the weak and the abased and the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And so he uses people like you and I who really didn't have a chance because of that yeah. old narrative and because of being marginalized and shut down and living in the shadow of others. I know what it is to live with a narcissist and with abuse and all of those things. We have so many things in common. I relate to what you're saying. And it's interesting too, the thing you said about being traumatized in the womb. Uh, my daughter, uh, I believe, was also traumatized when in my room, womb. And there are things that, you know, obviously it happened later in life as well. But uh, those things uh, we have to be able to unpack. How do we get to that place then where we begin to choose to trust? Because see, our trust has been broken by uh, authority figures, uh, abusers, people that, you know, we felt um, all of our expectations were were broken and and betrayed. And then we don't really know what to do with our hearts. And so how do we take this, this kind of broken mess and take it to the Lord and say, Father, I invite you in. Jesus, I need you here. What does that look like? What did that look like for you in, as you began to walk that out with him? Okay, showing my, my hum, humanness, I'm laying on the table and I'm thinking, <clears throat> this is awesome. I've got maximum two years to live and I'm going to die and be with Jesus and I'm not going to hurt anymore. Yeah. And escape. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. As in comparison to no, I'm going to do what God's called me to do. And I believe that there's a spirit of death over people's destiny right now that are keeping people mm -hmm. from doing what they're supposed to be doing. So this is very mm -hmm. important that we just, in the name of Jesus, come against that spirit of death over our mm -hmm. destiny, that we're going to walk out our destiny. We're going to accomplish what we were put on this earth to do. Amen. And, uh, and so at that point, then, you know, slap, <clears throat> slap, going to live, et cetera. And, uh, and then I, I was like, okay, so I would, I would, you know, I w tried really hard not to try to call, cry in front of the girls, but I would go mm -hmm. in the shower and I would just cry. It's the washing of the water mm -hmm. of the word, but there's cleansing in the shower and I'm yeah. weeping and weeping and weeping. And mm -hmm. we had our dog was outside the door just, ah, 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 are you okay? Cause she didn't know what was going oh. on. How come I was, it was really sweet. So I was sure yeah. she's waiting for me in heaven. But, uh, mm -hmm. but anyway, and it was like, you know, this is something that's very important. You have to, you, you need to forgive. The word says you yeah. need to forgive. Now, when you forgive, it doesn't mean what they did is now right. It mm -hmm. means that you exactly. have forgiven them of what they did. They, what exactly. they did is still wrong. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and so I, I prayed for a lady the other day. I mean, it was just horrendous. Some of the things we were dealing with uh, in a recent city. And her father had raped her at four years old, somewhere between mm. three and four. And she, and she was 44. She says, I will never forgive my father. Mm. And she, yeah. her body was racked with pain with fibromyalgia mm. uh, for 40 wow. years. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so long story short, I, I prayed with her, had her forgive her husband, which was easy. Her mom, which was fairly easy. And then her dad. And God's given me incredible revelation on how to do that. And, mm. and she did it. And she, the, wow. when the spirit left her, it, it, she just went whoosh. I mean, out of her mm. mouth went whoosh. And, and all sickness, of a sudden she's yeah. smiling and she's happy and no pain. God totally mm. took fibromyalgia when she, away when she forgave her father. And, wow. and it was absolutely miraculous. She was smiling. She's laughing. She's like, oh, my God, I did it. I forgave him, you know. And she was so mm. excited. And then she's like, then, she, then I gave her a hug. And she yeah. hasn't been able to really get a bear hug her whole life. 
mm. because of the pain. Isn't that I mean, so, so awesome what God did? It really is. And there is power in forgiveness. And what people don't yes. realize is that, you know, we, we tend to try to uh, run from our pain or avoid it. And bury it. It, it, we, and we bury, bury it. it. And yes. what we, you know, what you bury alive is going to stay there and fester. And, you know, what we don't he- feel, we will uh, not be able to heal. And so we right. have to go back to that place that is authentic, that is real, acknowledge it and allow the Holy Spirit into it so that we can heal and can forgive. Because if we don't, if we run from our pain, we're only giving it power. And right. so that power manifests, as you were describing, in our body physically. And so that power has to be uh, taken down in the name and through the blood of Jesus. Uh, and, you know, there are things that we cannot humanly forgive. I've been through those things myself, and I know the power of forgiveness. So I really believe that this is such an integral part of healing. Yeah. We, you know, it, when can you, you forgive, you get a facelift. She looked 10 years younger when she went home. <laughs> oh, wow. I, said, I can't wait for you to see your husband, oh, you that's... know, and her, and her husband go, what happened to you? You know, yeah. it was so awesome. Yeah. Our countenance changes, our Absolutely. disposition, the weight that we were carrying is gone. And so, you know, I, I just really feel like right now you could minister to someone that's watching. Uh, would you... Would you encourage them? Uh, I feel like there's somebody watching today that has been carrying a weight may, perhaps for many years that they do not know. They've tried and they do not know how to let this go. They don't know how to give it to God. Would you minister to that person right now? Yes, I also want to point out the scripture is Genesis 50 verse 20. Though the enemy meant this for evil, God took yes. it, turned around and, and made it for his glory. And, you know, and I often said, and I got about 15 books out of that from walking out my healing and making sure. it a step for everybody else to, to walk out their healing. And, uh, you know, and understand that this situation that you're going through is, it's not necessarily for his glory, but he will take it, turn it around and make a miracle out of it. And, and it's amazing what you know what how god can do that he'll bring people into you so i'm going to ask you to put your hand on your heart and i'm as i pray so father right now in the name of jesus i send the word of healing to each person right now within the sound of my voice i curse any and all forms of trauma uh any kind of betrayal abandonment that they've experienced uh any form of reason for unforgiveness uh, the pain that has been put against them. And also, uh, I feel a heaviness of the spirit of guilt, like what I did, et cetera. And, uh, and so, Father, I thank you for totally lifting that away. And, and I'm going to encourage you, as, as I am wiping my shoulders, that you wipe off any kind of shame that you've carried, because that will cause your shoulders to go thank in you, and Lord. down. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just command all of that shame to be lifted supernaturally in the name of Jesus. Yes. And any kind of disease that has come in as a result of that, fibromyalgia, I curse fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome in the name of Jesus and the spirit of pain. I command that to be gone and all stress balls to be gone. Any and all forms of breast cancer in the name of Jesus, the cancer, Jesus. The spirit of cancer is cursed in the name of Jesus. I curse every prion. A prion is a bad cell, eating good cells. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just curse every prion in Jesus' name. Any damage that the cancer or chemo or radiation has caused. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I speak complete healing, restoration. If they've lost their breast, Father, I speak a new breast on in Jesus' name. In Jesus' thank name, you, Father, I thank you for totally healing them. There's some of you that have, I even had broken heart syndrome, which is a mm. deadly disease. So Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I just speak uh, health and wholeness into their mm. heart, any form of broken heart syndrome. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I command a new physical and new emotional heart in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Amen. 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 And Father, Amen. we bless we bless our viewers with the gift of knowing you as their friend, their companion that walks with them and that will walk them through this journey in Jesus name. 
Oh, my friend, I love you. And I wish we had a lot more time, but I want you to talk about some of your teaching, your resources and your books. What would you recommend for people who are dealing with specifically the, the wound of trauma and uh, this issue of healing in their body? Well, this one is called Healing of the Heart. And this is my testimony. I mean, I lost everything. We lost the church. We lost our home. We lost the family unit, lost my health, lost all of our money, everything, starting over with nothing. So I learned in the year 20, 2000 how to really believe God for my finances and food and everything. It was amazing what God did. Wow. Great book regarding that. Number two mm. is Love Again, Live Again. This book deals with broken heart syndrome and like taking your heart back from mm. your you know, ex-husband or from when you were 13, the guy you fell in love with, that type of thing. And it teaches you how to do that, Rena- teaches you how to renounce the covenants, not soul ties, but with covenants, with ex-spouses, et cetera, like that. Mm. And then mm. I also have... Um, Power to Heal, which deals with um, going into getting rid of the root causes that can bring on a sickness. Uh, you mm. know, 26 books, there's probably 15 of them that deal with healing, healing of the heart, uh, emotions, deep trauma, freedom beyond comprehension goes in, uh, deals with how to get free of the guilt of abortion, uh, how to get free when you, out of SRA, satanic ritual abuse. Uh, Mm -hmm. I have two amazing people that have done their testimony in there uh, regarding that. Absolutely phenomenal. Uh, If you want to know how to pray for the sick, I've got that too. So praise God. Mm. One more question. I, uh, I would like to know, and I am sure our viewers would like to know, going through what you went through, you'd probably never want to have to revisit those moments again, the, uh, the pain that came with it. But are you thankful for the process and that you did go through those things and that your whole world fell apart so that you could really meet the person of Jesus in a deeper, more profound way that would be the paradigm shift for your future. Tell us, tell us your thoughts on let that. Me, let me kind of do it a different angle. Yeah. Through this, I met Joan. Oh, that's so good. I met that's Joan. So good. <laughs> yeah. Because I was his wife, mm-hmm. co-pastor of the church. Yeah. Also Hunter started their yeah. Mother. And then all of a sudden I lost everything. I had no idea who mm-hmm. I was. Yeah. And I went on a search trying to figure out who in the world I was, found me, fell in love with me. You think that's kind of weird? No, because you got to love yourself to love your neighbor and found out really, really who I was, which mm-hmm. is like really awesome. And, you know, and so oftentimes this wasn't necessarily my situation, but my people's relationship to God can be based on their husband or their parents, where mm-hmm. they need to have their own personal experience with Jesus. That's right. Yeah, that's so true. And that's something that I've said even myself, because, you know, I lived my life performing and jumping through those hoops. Uh, we know what that is. Uh, you know, having grown up with a lot of legalism and religious systems and, you know, by people that were very sincere, but just ignorant of um, the the power of God's grace. And I think that where people are today in this hurting world is they they really need to know that the person of Christ loves them unconditionally and that he yeah. did not come to condemn them. No one. And, you know, here's the thing. I have, through the power of not just forgiveness, but the power of his love manifesting in my life and in my identity as I came to know Brenda. And I think you're going to also affirm me in this. What it's done is it's given me such compassion and love for others that I see the bigger picture and that I don't label people anymore, not even my abusers, because I know that the blood of Jesus trumps all. We all have a choice to come free and to come home. And I really yes. feel that there are so many people though that don't know that he is the answer and that he wants to heal them and he wants to um, bring them into the fullness of who they were created to be. Before we go, would you just pray with us one more time and uh, just encourage our, our viewers today in their identity as they navigate 
through these these next few years as the the whole world has changed. I don't think we're returning to our old normal. And so we really need a strong sense of who God is authentically so that we can find out who we are. Do you agree? Yes. It's so important because some some of you feel like totally hopeless, you know, and useless and no good. And God wants you to, to know that you are called. Now, I'm going to say one other thing. People, after I got divorced, then it was like, you know, how can, you can't be used of God. You can't be, you're an embarrassment to God, right. et cetera, because of divorce. Come on. And I would go to my room and I would cry. And I'm like, what about the deaf ear that opened? What about the blind person? What about the back, you know, and God says, just remember, they're not the ones that called you. Yeah. And, and, and see, the thing is, is that when it's under the blood, it's under the blood. And mm-hmm. it's not my choice to have gotten divorced. Okay. Right. And it wasn't my, oh, I can't wait to get divorced. No, I was mm-hmm. faced with a situation, life-threatening in some degrees. Yeah. But the point is, it's like sometimes we don't have a choice and to do that. And so yeah. right now, I speak revelation onto who you are, why mm-hmm. you were born, Walking yes, that out, Lord. God will equip you for that. He will give Thank you, you fortitude. He'll give you the ability to be on TV, to do Zooms, to do Skypes, different things like that. Touch the world through your testimony. Mm. Don't just die and succumb because mm. that's exactly the, the enemy. His goal is to see you dead. And even yeah. if you're breathing you're dead emotionally and fit and, and spiritually. Yeah. So Father, I speak resurrection life to every single person that is thank watching. You, Father, I thank you for giving them a brand new heart, healing them. Thank and you, Father, Lord. we just thank you for all that you're doing in their lives and what you're mm. going to do in Jesus' name. And Jesus let me just say name. there is hope. There is yeah. hope. Don't hesitate to contact uh, our ministry. We'll be happy to pray with you, walk this out with you. Uh, go joanhunter.org yeah. uh, and see a huge selection of books uh, of a variety of other areas, even even yeah. some for men too. So that's good. Awesome. Awesome. And, uh, you know, one final thought as you were talking about how sometimes we have no choice. It is so true. And I've been down that road. I, I understand what it is to be absolutely broken and desperate for God's mercy, his love and his grace. And I think that's where every human being has to come Two, in order to really fully understand God's grace and be able to extend that to others. You know, in the book of Matthew, Matthew, Jesus talks about how that he did not come to bring peace, but he came to bring a sword. Now, he is the prince of peace, and you will experience peace as you know him. But that sword that he mentions, he he talks about relationships and how that he will sever things that will come that would have come between you and God. If there's anything in your life that is pulling you away from God or God, what God has ordained for you, meaning that God would not have you submit to anything but love. If there's anything in your life that, that is pulling you away from God or God's will that has become maybe an idol and uh, uh, put you in a codependent place. I want you to talk with the Lord about that, those things and allow him to come in and to, uh, redefine to separate the things that need to maybe fall off your life and to bring you into wholeness so that you can be a productive and a relative person in the body of Christ in a healthy way. Amen. So I want to thank you, Joan, for being with me. You are just a, such a dear sister. You've ministered to my husband and I before, and you're precious to us. And I want to tell all my viewers, you know, go to jo- Joan's resources and read her books. She's a mighty woman of God with such a wonderful and pure heart. And she loves you. And I love you. And I want to thank you for joining us today. Please be with us again next time. I'm Brenda Crouch. We'll see you again. 